yes, welcome to the history hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. These two pieces, they actually belong to a Russian Cold War nuclear bomb storage bunker. And today we're going to show you part two of this incredible little explorer that me and my son Eagle Eyes did. You can find part one here where it says more. Watch that in full first. Otherwise you lose completely all the context and there's no point in watching any further on this episode. But nevertheless, this is an amazing place. This is a huge camp hidden inside a German forest. There are several layers of uh, barbed wire fence systems, a concrete fence system around this area here, which today is what it's all about. So are you ready? If you want to help us out to reach more people, watch the video in full because YouTube algorithm counts seconds and we count seconds. Some. So if you do that, we are very happy for that. But now let's continue this little tiny saga of the Russian Cold War nuclear bomb storage bunkers. The main facility, as I said, contains something very, very special. And now I do understand why they put so many defensive measures out here. That is because if in the very, very, very last eventual event, if the worst of the worst happened, they had to defend their, this place with their life. And that is basically um, why there are so, so many um, fortified positions out in the forest here. They really said this so far, not any longer or not any further. And there you can see one of those turrets. But I really want to go this way first, okay? There's something there, something underground, which I really don't know what is. That's exciting. What is going on here? These look, they look crazy. I think they are storages. They had some kind of storage here. There are like six of these pods here. Basically just, yeah, shelter or storage. Very interesting. Let's go out and see the uh, turret in the, in this forest here. Wow, look at that. That's a little fortified concrete thing. Looks like an oven door. <laughs> Yeah, see that? That is cute. I don't, uh, it's crazy. This is so crazy to see. Wow, they really meant business here because they didn't want to have anyone to come this way. Tiny little wooden door and it's pointing directly towards the entrance area of the camp. Wow, never seen anything like it. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas in this place, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description. You can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. What we are looking for is entrances for something very, very special. Right there, that is the other entrance to this complex, which is now is completely closed off. But we can definitely see a very, very aggressive feature on the top. See how they wanted to protect this place? They said, so far, no further. And that is a statement that you will not come by. If you mess up here and you're outside here without authorization, boom, you're dead. 
He always said, Daddy, never seen anything like it. No, that's correct. We have never seen anything like it. And you can see here, this area here is the entrance to a massive Soviet Union nuclear bunker. And all of the different features you see on the top here, are ventilation shafts, ventilation uh, coming up from the roof. And it's basically one of the largest nuclear storage bunkers that the Soviets had in this region. As I said, this one is completely shut. Nobody will never get inside. But this is just one of several of the ventilations on the top. And then you can see on this side, you have another. Hefty machine gun turret. And down here, it looks so tiny, it looks so small, it looks so insignificant. And this shed here, you wouldn't know that there was something going on here. But, but let us take it down there and then you can see for yourself. So you do get the picture when you see that another machine gun turret. But then suddenly you come in here and you kind of walk casually over here and you see, hmm, there's something else going on here, isn't it? Well, there is, and that's what's going on. That is one of the entrances for the nuclear storage bunker. You can most definitely say that that thing is properly sealed off, but who would have guessed under this tiny little insignificant roof shack, or whatever, you have a massive USSR nuclear bunker. So then you see this flat area here, this road here leads in to this area here. And then suddenly, boom, it leads you into this area here. And what happened here? Well, this is where the Soviets unloaded and loaded their nuclear warheads. Yeah, that took place right here. So the nuclear loaded trucks, they came down here, they parked right here with all of this yellow black warning things and all of that. These are the containers where they shipped the nuclear heads. They came in here, they were offloaded and taken into that bunker. Is that crazy or what? You can see the crazy barbed wire fence system that's around here. It's insane. And it still stands here. I wonder how long that will be here. And not just that, that is the barbed wire fence system. There's a outer perimeter concrete wall there as well. And in between, maybe there were mines here. That's not too good to think about. <laughs> Even more Schutzengraben trenches absolutely everywhere in the outer perimeter. So now we're getting closer to the second of the nuclear bunkers. And you can see here a massive trench system. They were prepared for anything, and it was all because. The nuclear warheads was here, and even though it was the Cold War, nothing happened here. They had to be prepared, because if there was an enemy coming this way, all of these turrets, all of these trenches, all of these bunkers, they served one purpose, and that was to try as a last resort to keep the enemy from getting their nuclear warheads. So this is where it can get very exciting. Either this thing is open or is it, is it closed? We really don't know, but we really did our very best. So no matter what, we are going in there to check out the second 
area of the nuclear storage bunkers. Again, you can see they really mean business at this place. They really mean business at this place. It's another very special thing here. The door can actually open and close. And again, a protective measure. I guess they could have something up there as well. There are zillions of mosquitoes here and they will home into me soon. But you can see it's basically a firing post and uh, they could even shut themselves inside here. Here you can see the fence around it here. And suddenly there's a bunker. So I'm thinking is that leading to the other side of this fence? We're going to find out. Now it's another one of the turrets on the outer perimeter. Why? Which is actually on the outside of the fence. Oh, the door. Yeah, you can have a look, but you have to... Let me come out first. Okay. Suddenly, Eagle Eyes found camouflage canvas. Is material Russian? is Russian indeed and yeah, you can definitely yeah. see it's camo and uh, why is that out here in the middle of the forest huh that is strange all right we have to continue we think we found more of their training area these are definitely Russian Cold War tires that was used on their vehicles definitely and they dug them down here and we've seen a lot of kind of practice uh, elements. So they actually took advantage of these old tires and created something here. This is their exercise practice area for, for the soldiers. It's just outside the main camp. And uh, how cool to see that? Sand area? This is sand everywhere. So they could easily dig some trenches and foxholes to, to practice, to to. For, for all the, the, you know, they had to be guards here and they also had to be ready to fight. So that's mainly what they did. The Soviets even had a shooting ground and that's this place here. And me and Eagle Eyes, we just popped off. Wow, look at that Eagle Eyes. Most definitely. What does it say? I haven't got a clue. Maybe someone out there speaks Russian. It says, don't shoot at the boss. So this is cool. So they had their own shooting range and you can see here, one, two, three. So they had to practice. They had to practice. And this practice. is outside the camp itself. Yeah, they stood here with the Kalashnikovs and fired. And they had to practice to be able to uh, do their duties here. Mostly guarding of the compound. And I guess if you go into that mound there, you will find thousands of, of fragments. You guys saw something here? There's something here. What? Yeah, that's where you go to get up and, uh, I don't know, get the targets or something. Oh, uh, short range? Very, very cool to see. So many features here. What? Look there. Tum. Numbers and letters in Russian. Uh -huh. Let me see. There's something else there. There's a huge, huge board up there. Can you see that? What is that all about? Is it a poster or something? It looks like a map actually of the structures. You see that? Oh. There's a map up there. Wait, that's one of the bunkers. Yeah, number 10. That's a, there was a map on the wall here. Maybe to teach this, the troops to know where they are. But we're on the outside. This is actually on the outside of the perimeter. So that is strange. Either that or we are still on the inside. We just don't know it. <laughs> 200 liter fuel drum barrels. And then you have, uh, what is that? This is like a tower there. 
Do they have their own airfield? And look at this. Maybe this is for the shooting range. This looks like this could be distance in meters. Eli's. I'm coming, I'm coming. I think this is another part of the shooting range. But you can see here, you can see the distances, 350, 250. I'll and there's a lot of these, see? There's one. I tried to find the entrance. You see here? They have marked out different structures on that thing. Yes. And it says something there. One, That's two, three. No, I don't know. See, there's another one here as well. Huh. That's the shooting range, I think. That's the target, perhaps. That's the, Wait, that's the target. Huh. Very interesting. Very interesting. What an extraordinary special location. Just love that. If you want to help us out to reach more locations, you know, we have this little super thanks feature here. That is your way to make sure that we get some gasoline into the fuel tank and go out and find even more crazy locations. This area, this region here is full of very special things from the Second World War and the um, time after the post-war and the Cold War. And we are most definitely going to share more with you. So you just have to stay tuned. There's links, as I said, in the um, section under the video where it says more. You can find part one. If you haven't already, of course, you had seen that before this one. I hope so. Um, nevertheless, it was such an incredible experience for us. I just totally enjoyed that. Again, help us out. Watch the videos in full if you want to. Um, what can I say? Took us totally by surprise. It's totally tucked away into a forest. There's no way you can find this place if you don't really know where it is. I can promise you that. And it took forever to get to that place. So happy that it panned out so well. And uh, thank you for all of you watching, subscribing, commenting. It is greatly appreciated. It keeps us out there. And believe me, you will enjoy what's coming up next. So thank you, stay safe, keep smiling, and we'll see you out there in the next one.